1964 Chevrolet Impella 2-in-1 by AMT Ertl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Kit Builders. Are you ready for another great Monster Hobbies What's in the Box unboxing video? Well, today we are looking at the AMT Ertl 1964 Chevy Impala SS. Now, if you saw my 1963 Impala video, you will know that I am collecting Impalas from 1958 until now. I know there's not very many Impala kits, but there are a lot in the 60s, and this is another one of these great ones. However, this week's review is not a fresh what's in the box. This week's video review, my wife and I got these way back in the day. We got two of them, identical kits, and we started to build them because I was trying to show her how to build models, and we never finished these. <laughs> and I do want to review the Impala, but I don't have a fresh kit of it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to look at the two built-ups, or semi-built wherever we are, and we're going to review them because I have glued a custom nose on one of these so you guys will be able to see how that fits. So without further ado, don't forget again to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that whenever I make a video, you are the first ones to see it. This, of course, is our last 1964 video. So coming up, it will be 1965, getting into mid-year, or mid-decade, I should say. Anyway, without further ado, let's go down where the rubber hits the road and take a look at what's in the box. Welcome back once again to the Chevrolet showroom, where today we will be looking at the AMT Ertl 1964 Chevy Impala kit. I love the red on here. This is a two-in-one kit. Came out back in the early 60s or, well, around 64, as an AMT annual kit, meaning it came out every year. This edition is from 1998 from the Ertl Company. Uh, it is a skill level 2 kit, requires AG10, paint and glue. This is one of the first kits that I built, not this box artwork, an earlier one, one from the 80s. Uh, I always loved this kit, and a neighbor of mine actually, I, do recall her having a Chevy Impala. Don't know if it was a 64, but it was red. Anyway, there is the box. And like I said, my wife and I have built this. So it's sort of in semi stages, but I wanted to show it as part of the Impala collection. Okay, so let us open this thing up. Take a quick look at the instructions and move these out of the way. And like I said, uh, I apologize, this is not a fresh kit. It is one that we were working on, so I'm gonna show two versions of it where we are. So bought at New Westminster Hobbies, that's in British Columbia, July 23, 2001 for $14.99 with my wife, Julie. Okay, looking at the instructions, they do have some callouts for the colors down here at the bottom. And they give you, yeah, Hey, I don't need to show you the parts because here is the part explosion tree. So, uh, and then there's the other part of it. So there's the body and the interior tubs, the wheels, the whole thing, the grills, the hubcaps, you name it. Okay, so looking at this, we have a big long <laughs> stack of the engine. So this again is the 409. Uh, it's got those nice W, uh, valve covers on them. Very easy. This is one of the only early kits that actually had the mounting bracket for the alternator. And the alternator is not just floating in midair, so good on the early AMT guys. The engine is got the hole in it for the axle to slip through, and if you want something a little more naughty, there is the great big blower on there with the chrome-plated valve covers. Very cool. Same engine, of course, 409. 409 with a blower. Then we get into the interior. And I always thought these custom seats were pretty cool. Um, it's a tub again. You get a choice of shifters, either the straight up stock one or the bent racing customized one. Tachometer, uh, which I think also was stock. But anyway, tachometer in there. 
the dashboard, the steering wheel, and these little buckets with no headrests, and then of course the three-piece. Then here's our wheels. So the tires are the Goodyear Polyglass GTs with the spider inside that you got to cut out with your sharp knife. Then of course the custom five-spoke American or Krager Mag wheels, whatever they are, go in through these tires, wheels and tires, with the backing plate. You should get four of those. And then the stock one is going through the regular skinny Firestones, which were quite common in all these kits back then. And as we turn it over, now this one has the raising blocks. So for stock, you put the axle through the bottom, custom through the top. The undercarriage is one complete piece with molded and exhaust pipes, but your engines get to drop in here. Choose which one you're doing. And of course, in the back, you get your blocks again. And now we get into the body assembly. So here is the stock, or the, the sub-assembly, I guess. Your radiator drops in. The firewall is molded in as one piece. And it's got those tubes there, so if you're building a slot car, you can screw the body to a custom-built slot car chassis. Leave the engine out, of course, for your guide pins and whatever. Um, then you've got these mirrors and the custom antennas. The glass is one piece. You can saw across here and here just to have separate windows without this stuff running through the top of the roof when you turn the car over. The hood, you cut the hole in for your blower. You can put on the optional scoop. And then you get these lake pipes, the battery. Okay, so here is the stock grill with a bumper molded underneath, all plated, chrome plated. And here's the custom. So they've cut the grill down. They put in this uh, thing, almost like a 64 T-Bird, with this insert popping in. And then when we look at the back, you get your two tail lights. Remember to paint that panel aluminum. And then if you're building, oh, there's the stock bumper, goes underneath. And if you're building the custom, you get this nice roll pan with the two exhausts popping in the back. So that's a look at our 64 Impala instruction sheet. And now let's actually look at the kit in progress. So here we have our typical 1964 Chevrolet Impala body. And as I said in the intro to this video, my wife and I were both working on this car and I don't have a fresh example of it. But this is her car and she decided to go with the stock. Stock factory stock body. Now of course the hood is not molded in on this kit, it actually opens and comes off. I just wanted to show that to you. The fit and finish on it is really nice. Now here we have, of course, our fireproof matting underneath. There is a rectangle in here that you take the back of your number 11 hobby knife and you drag it across all these points and pop this out. Clean it up, of course, and you can pop the blower in on your 409 right through the top of the hood. There's one of those clips for the, or the little tabs for the ring and clip type thing that they had, a spring for opening your hood. These are huge mold marks. They actually pop up right out of the hood about 16th of an inch. So you're going to have to chop these off and sand them out with your number 16 hobby blade. Okay, I'll just move the hood up here. Now we examine the body. And as you can see, AMT really did a good job on this. You can see the Impala SS logo right in the insert, just like on the real car. It has some very nice chrome trim along here for your bare metal foil that's got the V8 logo. And again, back in the 60s, they were really into that hardtop convertible look. Make the uh, steel top look like it is a convertible cover by putting this ridge in here. So that's typical for GM. Ford was doing it. Everybody was doing it pretty much. And if you use that convertible boot out of the Mercury Marauder kit from last week, you could actually saw this off cut it along here really carefully. Make yourself up some uh, sun visors for the windshield and then glue that convertible thing right over the top back here. <laughs> it would probably work. I can't guarantee that though. Anyway, the door handles are molded in place. There is a sink mark up and around here on the front fenders, which you can easily fill. There is another one right here actually. That's pretty deep. 
If you do fill, use a cross sanding technique. So sand this way first, and then sand in the opposite direction, and then go back and forth this way. That will actually give you a perfectly flat surface because of the cross sanding. Right there is the indent for the fuel tank, the hidden filler, which is interesting because on some models in different years, that was actually in the back, right in the center underneath the license plate like on my real-life 72 Oldsmobile. Now here you can see Chevrolet scripted into the back along that molding and then of course our big Chevrolet bow tie logo which is popular in the day and underneath right there is the latch for opening this great big huge trunk. Now I'm just gonna switch this out for and, and show you what I was working on with mine. All right, so here is my body of the 64 Impala. And what I did was I glued on the custom pieces onto the front and the custom piece, the rolled pan that goes into the back here. And you can see how it nicely flows into the shape of the rear of the car. Very cool work. I'm gonna have to fill in here with some putty and then use my cross sanding technique to get that out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna remove the Impella SS. I kind of can't remember where I left off with this. Maybe even get rid of the trim along the sides, but it does give that nice sculpted shape into the side panels, which was, again, another popular thing back in the 60s. The front end is kind of reminiscent of a uh, uh, 60s, or 66 Thunderbird. And now if we take one of the hoods, here and we just put it in place you can kind of see what what uh, AMT was going for with that so I think what I'll try to do for a bit of ease of convenience here is show a bunch of parts that both my wife and I are working on that are universal to both our builds so we'll start here with the chassis now as you can see this is just one big huge massive piece Chevrolet used this uh, X-frame in here with no side supports. So keep that in mind on the real car that if you ever get side hit in a 64 Chev that this whole floorboard area will coll keep collapsing up until it hits this frame. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. It's one of the safety features I think Bill Nader was uh, upset with. <laughs> Anyway, here you can see that it was a screw bottom, but they blanked over the screw holes. So you can always open those up again and get into the posts that are underneath the car to screw this thing together for you slot car guys who may want to actually replace this whole pan with something that will work better for a slot car motor. But anyway, now if you turn this up, both my wife and I, these are separate pieces that you have to fit and glue in. But these are your blocks for your stock ride height and then lowered for your low rider. And then of course there is some detail in these fender aprons. So it's always nice. But here you can see the little pins that they put in place of the screws. This kind of came later in AMT life. Maybe not so much later, but they were getting away from the promotional look of the screw bottoms and trying to blank that over. What they really should have done is instead remolded this in the tool so that the gas tank actually went around where the screw holes dip into and then finish off the uh, rest of the frame up here. But you know, that's how they did it back in the 60s. So here we have, typical for the era, a molded in interior tub which consists of the bench seat or the rear seat molded in place, the package shelf and of course these big loops here so that you can hook them up underneath the rear window. And uh, there is very nice detail on this back seat. There's even the little vent and stuff in here with the Impala logo. Now what I've done here is I've scraped off the mold marks using my number 16 hobby blade and I've put a little bit of liquid glue on here just to melt down the scrapings. Here's the center column and uh, the console here. Your gear shift lever will go there. I think this is just a hole for no reason. <laughs> okay, and then this being an automatic, it's got the great big pedal here for your brakes and your gas pedal there. The next piece we have here is a very nice detailed dashboard. 
The only kind of complication is that the speedometer is right along here in this big long bar so if you want to reach in there and detail paint that which it actually does have the detail in there it's a very complicated task here we got our radio and everything and the glove box nice vent up here very good detail and the steering wheel of course is right here it's got the nice ring on there and a nice long column which will go right into the hole there. And here on this parts tree, or what's left of it, we have our three of our four wheel backs, and of course our bucket front seats, which have very nice detail, but they are a little bit clunky in here, so you're gonna have to scrape them with your hobby blade, and mine have flash also running around the outsides of them. But now looking at the wheel backs, of course they've got the long posts on here so that they come out and meet the body in the right spot, and the little holes for our metal axles. Now here's the custom seats, which, which are really cool. This of course is from my wife's model because she's not using any of the custom parts. But there's your headrest for your seat, the seat back, and the seat bottom. And there's a chrome piece that comes up out of here and connects all three together. There, of course, are our front and rear roll pans and these long exhaust pipes. Now, if we take this and turn it around, there is some button detail on the back of these seats. But again, you got these crazy mold mark things that are popping up here. So you're gonna have to take a file or something and go in here and also clean it up on the edges where it's gonna contact that big piece of chrome. Now here's the parts tree that contains all the pieces we need for our engine block. Well, most of them because my wife and I glued the engines together. Anyway, there is the oil pan. We've got a exhaust manifold here our cylinder heads for the 409 engine there's our battery carburetor air cleaner fan belt or fan I keep saying that uh, distributor the gm delco alternator which also has the mounting bracket which is rare in these kits from 64. Uh, actually most of the model kits don't have the bracket in then we've got the pulleys here for our blower and this is the intake manifold for the blower now I'm just going to move this out of the way because I want to show you. This is where my wife got to with her engine. So you can see they've got the hole in here for the metal axle to go through. She's got the valve covers glued on and painted. We did this with a brush, I believe. This is Chevy Engine Orange. Uh, there's the transmission. Oh, it's not an automatic because there's the linkages. Oops, I'm a little bit too low on the frame there. Anyway, I'm getting... Okay, there's the linkages there. So this isn't an automatic, but uh, they did it with the pedals. Anyway, whatever. It's okay. It looks like a Chevy, right? So it must be a Chevy. Okay, so... And then she's got the timing cover on there and the water, water pump as well. So just move this out of the way. Now this is my engine here. Oop. And I haven't glued the oil pan on, and I haven't glued on the valve covers yet, because there are some very nice chrome ones that are finned that go in here for the custom version, and of course a custom oil pan underneath. Okay, I have to apologize because, well, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're working on this car, so there's a lot of pieces that I won't be able to show you because they're just dumped in the bottom of boxes. <laughs> All right, anyway, you guys know how this is. So, what I can show you here is this really detailed firewall, which is prototypical of the actual car. It is kind of compressed in here. And they have this big cutout again for that metal clip. There's the horns that go in the front. And we've got a radiator here, which has the radiator shroud uh, molded in place. Actually, this is a fan shroud. What am I talking about? <laughs> but again, you can see mold buttons on here. And this will all have to be taken off. But you can get a block of sandpaper and go across here and hit them all at the same time. 
So next up we've got my favorite part of all the model kits, which is the chrome tree. And there's some cool effects on here. So this is the custom grill that I'm going to be inserting into the front of my car, as well as the little custom piece that goes underneath. These are the parts for the blower. There's those finned valve cover or cylinder head covers I was talking about, as well as the finned custom oil pan. This of course is the center of the blower. And our air intake or our hood scoop or whatever you want to call that for the blower. Now, much like the Mercury Marauder, we have a disc brake sitting here, which you can display with one of your wheels off. If you got the Marauder kit, you can also display the drum brake on the back end and have one side with no wheels on it on blocks. Here we have antennas for the custom and, of course, two-piece mirrors. The rear bumper for the stock version and the front bumper for the stock version with the Chevy logo in there, and or the script and the logo up top. Both grills would, would benefit from a black wash in there. Headlights are molded in place on both of them, but uh, here we have some very beautiful SS stock hubcaps for 64. Then of course there's the front of our engine and our custom exhaust pipes. Now here again we have our front window and our rear window molded as a one piece with these rails going across. There seems to be a problem with the way this one was molded. There's actually like the rails broken there. Um, and here we have our tail lights. These are the typical Chevy 3 tail lights. So would be six across the back. One of them of course is going to get a white dot in there or whatever because it's a reverse lamp. I have to actually look at what a 68 Chevy or 64 Chevy looks like on the back but anyway so again you want to cut this off like there and get in a nice arc in there so that when you look at this thing from underneath you're not going to see these ugly rails going across the top so our final piece here are the stock wheels now this is the way my wife wants to build hers as a stock 64 Chevy Impala so the tires that are in here are the Firestone tires and of course these tires are also the ones that are in like the 32 Fords, the 40 Ford kits and whatnot. So they're not the, the uh, Firestone Supreme tires, they're just the regular ones which just have a basic straight tread going on them. And there's our wheel backs, you can see how long it is just so it comes out to the right stock proportions on the body. Uh, very nice simple wheels three piece or yeah three piece including the tire and then of course for the custom we have these nice Krager style wheels mounted on Goodyear polyglass GT uh, tires the L60-15 s and these have the zigzag pattern and then along the back here you can see the wheel inserts and again a three-piece wheel tire combination the tires are of course quite bigger so or wider I mean so there are two options here and as Mr. Spock says there are always possibilities and since this is 1964 they would be filming the original Star Trek pilot the cage starring Jeffrey Hunter and of course Leonard Nimoy And that completes our review of the AMT Ertl 1964 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport 2-in-1. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of the 1964 Chevy Impala 2-in-1. I know my wife and I were working on these things, so the fresh kit, when you get it, will look more like what was on the instruction sheet anyway. And this is one of our favorite Impalas. I've built many back in the past. A really good kit to start with. And of course, you could build this as a slot car if you pull the bottom off and make your own underneath, undercarriage. So once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that whenever I upload a video, you are the first to know about it. And won't that be great? Next week we begin 1965, so let's not miss that. 
be really, really cool. And until next time, keep on chasing that Impella.